Welcome to Excel magic trick number 1460. Hey, if you want to download this Excel file so you could follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, we've got this question from Bennett Phillips described here. But what he wants is he wants a formula right here to look up a particular item, that's the lookup value, in the lookup array and return the relative positions in a single cell. So if I'm looking up 6, I'm going to count on my fingers relative position. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 7, 8, 9, and 10. Those are the relative positions that I need to return to a cell. If the lookup item is not in the lookup array, then I need to return that message. All right, let's go over to the sheet 1460. Now the first thing we want to do in the cell is I somehow in the formula need to list all the relative positions, not the row numbers. I don't need 4, 5, 6. I need in the cell 1, 2, 3, all the way to the last item, 1 to 12 relative positions in the cell. And then I will pick out from amongst all the relative positions the ones that I want. Now anytime you're going to create an array of relative positions, we're going to use the row function. Why? Because we're going down across the rows, we're going to use row. If we were going across the columns, then we would use the column function. Now I'm going to hit the F4 key, close parentheses, and I'm going to F9. And by the way, right here, row is expecting a single cell. But because we gave it a range here, we're forcing the row function to return an array of answers. That means we're in the realm of array formulas. Now I'm going to use F9 to evaluate. And sure enough, it's polite. It returns all of the actual row numbers. But that's not what we want, Control-Z. So at the end, we say minus row. And this time, we'll select just the first cell in the actual range of numbers, F4, close parentheses. Now this will give us. 4 minus 4 for the first position, 5 minus 4 for the second position. If I hit F9, not quite what we want. We want 1 to 12 instead of 0 to 11, Control-Z. So I add 1 back in. Now this array formula construction to get all of the relative positions is a well-known formula element. I talk about it in my book, Control-Shift-Enter, extensively. If I hit F9, notice it gives me exactly what I want, all the relative positions. Now I'm going to Control Z if you have a situation where you have data and you always have a column header or field name at the top, meaning this chunk of cells is always going to stay together, then we don't have to do row of the first one plus one. We can simply backspace, backspace. Watch this. I'm going to drag this up. That will give us the same result. So you can use this construction to get all the relative positions when you have data in rows and always a field name. Now if I F9, I get exactly the same thing. Now notice we have 1 to 12. And if we're thinking about our formula down here, I need to pick out 7, 8, 9, 10. So I'm going to filter this in accordance to whatever the lookup value is. So Control-Z. Right after the equal sign, I'm going to type the if function. And our logical test will be, please look at the entire range of values, F4 to lock it, and are any of you equal to the lookup value as a relative cell reference, comma. Now what we did is we did another array calculation here. If I hit F9, we can see they're all false, because 9 is nowhere in this list. But when I copy this down, 6 will get a true in these four positions, which will allow us to pick out the 7 to 10 relative positions. Control-Z to undo that. Now I want to insert a blank wherever there is no match. So I come to the end. I can see value of true. I type a comma. Value of false. This is where I put double quote, double quote. Now that is a zero length text string that will be understood as an empty cell or a blank. Now I'm going to close parentheses. 
Now, this is an array formula. I'm going to enter it just with Control Enter. It's not going to show me anything because I don't care right now. I just want to come down to this cell right here and hit F2. And now when I hit the F9 key, I can see, sure enough, that construction picks out the relative positions that I want. Now, notice we have double quote, double quote, which is either understood by the formula as an empty cell or a zero length text string. We can wrap the text join function, which this text join is a brand new function in Excel 2016 if you have the Insider Edition. And that function, if we wrap it right here, will allow us to, with a delimiter, and our delimiter will be comma and space, join all these together in a single cell and ignore any empty cells or blank. Now, I F9, I'm going to escape to revert back to whatever was in the cell before I put the cell in edit mode. Click in the top cell F2. Now, after the equal sign, text join. This function alone in Excel 2016, and mo most versions have been automatically updated to include this. But this function alone is worthy of getting Excel 2016. In fact, I already have 16 different videos in this playlist about all sorts of amazing uses for text join. And Leela, with help from Bill Sizzes, just posted this amazing video. you got to go check it out for yet another great use of text join. Now, text join, the delimiter is the first argument. So in double quotes, comma, space, in double quotes, that will be the item that's placed between each relative position. Now I type comma. We want to ignore empty cells, or in our case, blanks, which the formula will treat the same. You can either put true or leave it omitted. I'm going to leave it omitted, comma. But that formula will work. I come to the end, close parentheses. If I were to just hit Enter, it will not work because we have array operations going on here. And that argument there and this one right here, these arguments cannot calculate in a single cell array operations correctly unless you use the keyboard Control, Shift, and Enter. Immediately, I look up to the formula bar to verify that those curly brackets were put in automatically. Now, when we did Control, Shift, Enter, that's us telling Excel to calculate this as an array formula. But those curly brackets are Excel telling us that it understood and calculated it as an array formula. Now, I can double click and send it down. And look at that. That is so beautiful. It lists all the relative positions. And I like this. It shows nothing when there are no matches and no relative positions. Now, Bennett actually wanted a phrase here. So we're going to have to amend our formula up at the top using the if function and a few other formula elements, F2 to put it in edit mode. Now I'm going to click after the equal sign. If, and we need to figure out a logical test to determine when to put our alternative text in and when to run this and list relative positions. Well, if we're looking up each one of these lookup values over here, we can use the match function to determine whether or not the item is in the list. Now, the match function, if we go down to this cell right here, if I just use the match function and say, hey, match, look up 6 over here, it will find the relative position, but match function ignores duplicates and only returns the first position. So for 6, we would see a 7, meaning relative position 7. But up here in the top cell, if I look up 9, it's going to return the error NA because it can't find the item in the list. So in logical test, I'm going to type match. Lookup value, there it is. Comma, lookup array, those are just the actual items. F4 to lock it, comma. And since we want to ignore duplicates and find an exact match, and because this is not sorted, we're going to use exact match. Zero, close parentheses. Now I'm going to type a comma, and then come back to logical test. So match will deliver one of two things. 
In this cell, it can't find it, so it will deliver NA. Down here, it will return relative position a number, the number 7. So the only thing match can deliver in the entire column is NA or a number. So we have a choice here when we're creating logical tests. We can either wrap is NA around this, which will return true when there's no match, or we can type is number, which will return a true when it finds a number. I'm going to choose is NA tab. Is an A will simply return true or false, true when it finds an NA. So that means right after the comma, now I am in value if true. Well, what do we want if it's an NA? I'm going to Control-V because I already copied this big, long thing. Whoops. I'm going to come right after that double quotes and type comma. Now we can click on value if true. That's what's going to be put in the cell if there is no match. That's what's going to be put in the cell if, in fact, there is a match. Now I come to the end, close parentheses. If I hit Enter, it's not going to work. I can double click and send it down. Of course, it's not going to work, because what did I forget? I click in the top cell, F2. I forgot to do Control-Shift-Enter. Even when I put this array formula in edit mode and start editing in it, I have to remember to do Control-Shift-Enter. Now I'm verifying. Excel's telling me with the curly brackets it understood. So now I can double click and send it down. That is amazing. If I come up here and type 6, boom, just like that, it is working. If I type 9, it is totally working. Control-Z-Z. -Z. All right, that's a little fun with a text join array formula to list all the relative positions, and then is NA and match to determine if there is a match, and if there is not, put the text in. All right, if you like this video, click that thumbs up and comment, and be sure to sub, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. All right, we'll see you next video.